I was sexually abused as a little child. Oh man, yeah, wow. Sexually abused at five, as five year, mm. at five years old by a family member. Mm. Wow, that's a, that's really bad. Yeah, I was betrayed. Mm. And um, did you you did you have knowledge of it? Did you know what happened to you? Because most people don't I'm, really understand. Yeah, I had mm. a memory of oh. what happened. You know, just kind of this experience, and and I thought I didn't really think anything too much of it until I realized like oh that's actually not right that's not natural that's not how it was supposed to happen right. I was bullied because I think I was afraid and I've been also kind of just I don't want to say effeminate but I've been smaller for a guy I've been like uh, my voice didn't drop with all the other kids <laughs> like mm. I've just always been uh, kind of picked on for being kind of girly mm. and I think um it's not that I wanted to, it's not that I wanted to necessarily be a girl as a child, but I felt like a girl because of right. the circumstances. I did truly feel like a girl. Mm. I started taking an extreme amount of hormones, injecting myself with estrogen, puberty blockers, wow. progesterone. Mm. And um, yeah, I, I was for almost two years on that course, on that course until I just, I mean, it, it wasn't. It wasn't for me anymore, honestly. I, I just, I really looked at myself, my body, and, and was thinking like, what am I doing to myself? I'm wow. changing myself. I'm doing irreversible yeah. things to my body. I'm not going to be able to have children. What really held mm. me together, besides God, is uh, I think my internal value system if I want to have a family. Hey guys, uh, Friendly Evangelist here. <laughs> Slavic, and this is... Zoe. Zoe, and he has a powerful story to tell you about how he came out of the transgender lifestyle and how Jesus Christ changed them because it's all about how God changes lives. And I want to share you guys his story because it's so powerful and it really touched me. And I just met him on a, uh, not randomly or accident, but with God, God incident here at the U.S. Golf Tournament. You can't really see it, but we're at the U.S. Golf Tournament uh, 2024 in Phoenix, Arizona. Scottsdale to be exact. And so uh, anyways, yeah, so start. Tell me about your life and how you grew up. Yeah, mm. so my name is Zoe, and I grew up in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Mm. I'm 22 years old. I'm about to turn 23. <laughs> I'm not really sure exactly where to start with with mm. my whole journey. I think, you know, as I'm still in the middle of it, very much so. Mm. And um, But I will say I, I no longer identify as transgender. Mm. You know, I, I am a male, and uh, I am proud to be a man um, <laughs> god made us male and female yeah and, uh, i use he him pronouns uh, but there was a time there where i did use she her for a while um but yeah so i guess going back to how i grew up i think i i didn't really feel close to any sort of purpose growing up i think i felt very lost growing up uh, the way mm. i was not the way i was raised but just my the circumstances I was in with family, mm -hmm. and uh, did you have a religious family or non-religious? So, uh, some of my family mm -hmm. was religious, but it was never like I went to church. Right. Um, I think I did go to church a couple times, but it wasn't. Um, they were kind of traumatic experiences, <laughs> so I think I don't really want to go back. Um, mm -hmm. But I also believe that you don't really need to go to church to find Christ. Hey, yeah. You right, know, right. I, I think you can find Christ without the church, but I think it can be a good. A catalyst and a good way right, to, to yeah. find Christ, and it's uh -huh. definitely brought me closer as I've gone. Right, amen. Mm. Uh, yeah. Um, so, wh how was your family life? Was it good, bad? Yeah. So to this day, I have a good relationship with my parents. Mm. It's um, obviously I want it to be better, mm. and and uh, but it, it's for where it's at. I think it's good. I think um, you know I'm kind of just trusting in Jesus, yeah. but. Yeah, growing up, I, I didn't feel very close to my family. Mm. I felt very isolated from them. Oh, wow. Um, well, why is that? Well, I felt oh. very... Er, I was sexually abused as a little child. Oh, man, yeah, wow. Sexually abused five, as five year, mm. at five years old by a family member. Mm. Wow, that's, a, that's really bad, yeah. I was betrayed, mm. and... Um, did you, you, did you have knowledge of it? Did you know what happened to it? Because most people don't I'm, really understand. Yeah, I had mm. a memory of oh. what happened, you know, just kind of this experience. And, and I thought I didn't really think anything too much of it until I realized like, oh, that's actually not 
right. That's not natural. That's not how it was supposed to happen. Right. And I realized how that shaped my whole experience of trying to find my identity, trying to find my sexuality, trying to just be okay with my body right. because it, it really affected my body and my, wow. my body image, my self body mm. image. Um, yeah. Wow. And alongside that, my, my parents split up when I was five as well and got divorced. Mm. And so these two things happened and uh, my parents moved separate. Right. Where are you from? Where are you from? Originally from Colorado. Colorado, Colorado. that's right. And did they move like out of state or in different cities? Yeah, so, so my mom moved to California okay. uh, for work and I stayed with my dad in Colorado uh-huh. and lived with him. Um, but it was, it was, you know, as much as I love my mom today, I'm going to go see her for Valentine's Day. I'm <laughs> taking her out to dinner. Oh, that's great. Um, that's awesome. You know, I didn't feel like I had a close relationship with her growing up. Oh, wow. Yeah. Unfortunately. Right. Kind of had the same similar. Well, after I became a Christian, my mom and I didn't really have a good relationship because she she turned towards like New Age and atheism. So I, I know how it feels like to not have a good relationship yeah. with your family. Yeah. Yeah. But go ahead and then so I, go ahead and finish. Your, so. Um. Yeah. You know, I, I was just gonna say like. <laughs> oh, this is good. I don't. I don't know. Uh, I'm trying to see what's what's coming to me right now. I. Family is just so important that it's it's uh, the fact that I I feel like I grew up in some ways without a family and I know right. too like I have my right family. right to be so close off to them the whole time yeah yeah absolutely it's like family can make you or break you and how they treat you yeah. right yeah and I didn't have a, a relationship with spirituality with God oh. and so those times where I was alone and, and felt. Alone, I didn't. Uh, it was I was truly alone because I didn't have, I didn't have God. You know. Right, right, right. Without God, we're all alone. Yeah. Yeah. So after that happened, after that abuse, what happened with your identity? Was were you, was it fractured? Did you? What did you go after? You know, what things did you start pursuing? I see. Well, so I also was bullied a lot after that i would say when i went into school i was bullied because i think i was afraid and i've been also kind of just i don't want to say effeminate but i've been smaller for a guy i've been like uh my voice didn't drop with all the other kids (laughs) like Mm. i've just always been uh kind of picked on for being kind of girly and i think um it's not that i wanted to it's not that i wanted to necessarily be a girl as a child but i felt like a girl because of right. the circumstances i did truly feel like a girl mm, I I mean, there are moments today where i still feel like a girl but i uh, know i'm not but it's right. like that's just a feeling right right it's a fe- feelings don't have define truth or reality exactly. but yeah so you know and i wanted to i felt more comfortable with girls as a kid because of what had happened with my uh-huh. mother, right sure. but yeah that's no yeah. oh, that's pretty much it what was when when did you start actually wanting to know about God in your teenage years or whatever years? I had always been open, right? Uh-huh. So like I I've never I've never identified as an atheist, but oh, there was okay. a point in my life where I identified as agnostic. So I identified mm-hmm. as agnostic for a long time, and um, I was just searching for truth. Right. And it wasn't until I began my addiction uh i I used crystal meth for a while wow when did that start i think i started using crystal meth when i was the first time would have been like 1920 gotcha how old are you now 22 okay so a few years back a few years a few years back and um i remember just laying on my bed uh completely i guess strung out you could say and uh i i looked to the light I looked it was i think it was evening time and i saw the sun was setting and the sun, the sun was shining straight in my face and i just prayed i prayed to god and um because i just i knew i was at such a low point in my life that i couldn't I couldn't do it. And that was like my first time, I think, where I actually prayed. Oh, I actually like, first time. surrendered and prayed. Huh. Know, but, and, and after that, I mean, I, I obviously I was still in the circumstance, but I felt very different. Uh-huh. I felt very different. And I felt like this sort of feeling of like everything's going to be okay. Huh. Interesting. Uh, wow. Yeah. What happened after that? Well, after mm. that, I uh, I was living in Colorado at the time. Mm. 
Um, I actually moved to Arizona. Okay. That, so I was about 20, 21, 21, and I moved to Arizona. Okay. And uh, for is, for work or school? Not for work or school. Mm. It was actually to get a closer relationship with family. Oh. My so okay. So uh, I guess God kind of guided me to to that to, right. to be closer to my mom, and um, so I moved out here. And uh, that wasn't the end of my usage, though. I ended up using more. Oh, wow. Uh, crystal meth? Uh, wow. But I really just want to also say that, like, while I do believe crystal meth is a bad drug, I don't think anyone should do it. I'm not condoning yeah. it at all, obviously. Uh, I think the thing that underlies that, uh, that's even deeper is actually porn, pornography. Pornography. And so, because I realized is like, the crystal meth was just, like, an addition to, I think, uh -huh. the, the porn, you know? So... Talk about your, like, you were addicted to porn at that time, oh, too. Oh, So extremely oh. addicted to porn. And porn, I think, is is one of the worst evil addictions you could ever do. I think it is destroying men today. I think it is changing the course of history. Yeah. I think uh, the fact that it's just so widely available, it's it's terrible. Yeah, I, I, mean, I agree. I such a, it's, it's awful. It's what contributes to human trafficking and to the rise of transgenderism, confusion of the genders, because yeah. of the tranny porn, lesbian, all that stuff. I was first introduced to porn, I think I was like six or seven. Wow. I was so young. Wow, right? that's so phone. young. Uh, oh my goodness. Me, uh, a picture of, mm -hmm. I think, some girl's breasts on a flip oh. phone, and it just kind of spiraled from there. Oh. When I got my first phone, I think in, at 11, in the beginning of middle school. Right, right. But, huh. uh, yeah, it, it's, it's no joke. And, wow. um, it's not natural, and it's, uh, it just, yeah. Yeah, wow. Okay, so you were agnostic, you're trying to see God, even when you're doing drugs, and so you felt like something was changing, you felt like God was kind of answering your prayer. Yeah. Well, what happened after that, and how did you transition to your transgender lifestyle? Did you take any hormones or anything? Well, I reached a point so low with the, with the porn and the crystal meth that I, I needed a, I needed to, I needed to surrender in some aspect. And I think coming out as transgender was a way for me to surrender, but also to just kind of let go of all of that shame, that guilt and kind of, kind of move on uh, to this new way of living where huh. I don't have to hold all that baggage of using using and just like the porn and everything right. i could just let it go and embrace this new identity right i could embrace this new identity where i wouldn't really have to focus on the old identity my true identity yeah. as a male right and i could leave behind all that pain right that's right that, like that makes escape. sense it was escape um, so you fully like committed to that identity fully committed. Uh -huh. i started taking an extreme amount of hormones injecting myself with estrogen puberty blockers uh -huh. progesterone mm. and um yeah, I, I was for almost two years on that course, on that course until I just, I mean, it, it wasn't, it wasn't for me anymore. Honestly, I, I just, I really looked at myself, my body and, and was thinking like, what am I doing to myself? Wow. I'm changing myself. I'm doing irreversible yeah. things to my body. I'm not going to be able to have children. What really held mm. me together besides God is uh, I think my internal value system if I want to have a family. I right. As I began to heal my family structure a little bit with my current family, I realized how valuable family is. Right. Or I guess you could say the evil, the devil, to take away that uh, opportunity for family through chemical castration, through yeah, transitioning. Right, right. Because, um, yeah, you can't have kids can't through have that. Kids, yeah. You know? And I praise God, I didn't get sex reassignment surgery oh, and go all the way. Yeah, but, man. You know, I, it's, uh, you know, I thought about it for a while. It was like that instant uh, gratification of that lifestyle was only going to last so long until, um, you know, what happens when I'm 50, 60 years old and I'm all alone? Right. I don't have a family, exactly. I don't have a legacy. I don't have yeah. uh, community. So. Yeah. It's similar to people who do OnlyFans or porn. You know, it's like they're using their bodies when they're young and they're looking good. But then what's going to happen when they reach 30, 40s, 50s? Hit the wall, so to speak. I, I got yeah. even sucked into that no. a little bit, too. I thought for a while that I, I mean, as I'm ashamed to say this, mm. but that like I would do porn, that I would be because oh. how else am I going to support this life? Oh, right. So you're making money off of that, exactly. too. Oh. Thank God I never did that. But it's just like the path. That the, was the, the path. path. Right. Wow, that's incredible. So, Zo, um, tell me now, how how did you meet Jesus, and how did 
that encounter transform you into becoming a, a Christian? Yeah, I would say I and I just met Jesus through things happening in my life that I think some people could call coincidental, but aren't coincidental. A certain person coming into my life, a certain interaction I had with the person that day, just reminding me of, of truth, just reminding me of who I truly am and who I truly want to be. Right. Um, I would pray all the time and I would write down in my journal, I would journal to God. And eventually I think once I got to the Holy Bible and actually ordered one. I think when I or- <laughs> ordered Amazon? ordering a Bible on Amazon was probably the hardest thing I've ever done. And when well, I finally got it, I think that's when I I just, things in my life started to change. Wow. Like, and uh, so it's hard to pinpoint an exact moment. I'm yeah, sure I could, yeah. I could gather a couple, but yeah. um, I, I think actually, I, I'll go back to what I told you off camera. Right. Is, when I looked down at my body and I was literally castrating myself and I realized like this is like this I just I think I was so I don't even know if distraught is the right word to use but right. it was so hurting that I just I, I needed to change and I think I just gave up to Jesus and, wow and, uh, you know he told me it's gonna be okay you're gonna be able to have kids Amen. And you just have to follow me Amen. Yeah, that's amazing. That's when you surrender your life to Jesus. You know, and I'm not saying I'm perfect. I think. Amen. I'm perfect, yeah. But it's like sure. he, he, you know, is correcting my life so much. Yeah. And um, what? Yeah. Oh, and after that happened, you feel like everything started changing. Everything started changing. Oh. I started getting different videos recommended in my YouTube. I started getting a lot of stuff. Christian videos. You know, it's like oh. we are. We are a, uh, we're like a radio. We, we tune into yeah, certain yeah. frequencies. And it's like, sure. as soon as I surrendered, I just, different things started happening in my life. Man. Amen, yeah. different, things, different people I would see, I would smile at different people. Different people would say hi to me. I would just have this different way about me where I'd walk into right. the room and I would be just confident. And I think it was the Holy Spirit working through me for sure. Yeah, man. Well, that's amazing. Dude, I'm, yeah. I'm so excited for he started, you. He started yeah. helping me get to my inner, uh, my inner country boy. <laughs> I think that's really because, you know, think about how, how different it was back in the day. All this technology that we have now, we didn't have this. It was no. so different. Yeah. Everyone lived off the land and, you know, they, they spent time with each other, not on screens. Exactly. exactly. So I don't know. I don't know. That's yeah. powerful, though. Uh, another thing I want to ask is um, what's been going on recently? Have you found a uh, community of Christians, church body? to help you grow in your faith? Uh, I, I have found a church that I go to. Uh, I, I enjoy it. I don't feel like I have a close group of people mm. that I, I think I'm still looking for. Um, I guess that community, you know, I think my community that I had back in Colorado that I kind of left. Right. Well, they all kind of just watched me head towards the cliff. I think um, I miss them a lot, but it's mm. like I realized that God's going to put certain people in my life that are supposed to be in my life. Absolutely. I'm going to find those true people that really love me for who I am and, and right. not for anything else. They just, because that's the love. That's the love of Christ. That's right. God. Just, love. That's my family, you know, my tribe. Amen. And, uh, Amen. Well, I'm going to say a prayer for you um, right now. You know, I'll ask God to bring people into your life. So, um, oh, before I say a prayer, what things like are you learning in the Bible right now that God's revealing to you about himself and who's Jesus Christ to you? So those two questions. Yeah, I'm learning that Jesus is the most loving being in the world. I mean, he is the embodiment of love. He literally gave everything, everything to just for people. He gave everything, Amen. everything. He was perfect. He didn't yeah. do anything wrong. Right. While we all walk around as sinners, he, he gave everything and he is the most forgiving person he is a father he just wants what's best for you and Amen, the, yeah he's like you know the way that uh, like a, a comparison i could use like like i said with walking off the cliff uh-huh. you know you have the free will you can walk off the cliff yeah but he doesn't want you to right because like, you'll, you'll still have the consequences exactly. of walking off the cliff exactly so it's it's not i think a lot of people think it's this um, scary thing to follow Jesus or this like uh, there's a lot of shame or stigma in the idea of it like he's going to judge you but it's not that's not true like, it's it's just he just wants what's best for you and sometimes I think we don't know what's best for ourselves because I was at a point in my life where I didn't know what was best for me I didn't know that truth be told I do want 
you know, to be happy in the long run. I want to have a family. I want to um, make an impact, you know. I thought I was so hopeless in my life. I was so hopeless that I I gave up and, and that's why I like I surrendered. But Jesus helped me come back to the light. Like he he, he, he helps me. So um he is he's he's, he's just, God. He's God. Yeah. 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 That's awesome. Praise so. God. Yeah. So um what do you need prayer for? Any struggles are you going through right now that I could pray for you? Besides, you know, growing in your faith. Yeah, um, I, what I really need right now is I am on the path to celibacy and I'm, I'm really struggling with that. Really? It is something that I want, I want to be fully celibate until I, well, not fully celibate until I find a wife, you know, and have kids, of course, but, um. Are you, are you saying you're engaging with? Those? Not other people, uh, but, um. Like pornography? Not even pornography, oh, okay. it's just myself. Oh, you're just struggling with. With, uh, desire. Yeah, desire and lust, uh, and uh, and and I think it's mainly because when I'm alone, you know, I don't have the, yeah. the uh, I, I don't know what it is, but I just I feel I yeah. yeah will, it's like the willpower to overcome because it's like it's hard. You know, you're alone, yeah, so exactly. it's like you're with yourself. Your flesh takes over. Yeah. And even as a Christian, if, if you read the Book of Romans, I encourage you to read the Book of Romans. Paul Paul even says that. Paul even says that. Um, the flesh and the spirit fight against one another and the spirit doesn't you know wants what the flesh doesn't yeah. and vice versa yeah. so even as a Christian you have this fight every day but if you're able to practice surrendering to, to Jesus every day like God I surrender my, my flesh to you I want you to guide me you will build up like discipline you know mm -hmm. so you don't have to give in yeah. but it always helps it's always important you know for everybody even it's important to have a community a discipleship because mm -hmm. without it even I as a Christian was failing I was flailing like a fish yeah. and I was addicted to pornography too and without a community it was to hold me accountable and help me get delivered and set free from demonic spirits yeah. and all with that I was very I was I was just, I was just kept going back, even though I didn't want to. It was like, ah, oh, it's like I feel addicted, right? So, um, so I'll pray for you to find that community. I would say that and also, um, just that maybe I, I can, yeah, yeah. I think that, yeah, okay. Yeah, I was gonna say something, but that, that actually embodies everything. Yeah. Really okay, yeah. Well, thanks for sharing your testimonies. So, like, I really think it's really powerful. I think it's gonna change a lot of lives. And, um, I think it's, it's, it's powerful to see what God can do. Uh, and somebody's, he was, Zoe was telling me that God goes after, you know, one out of the 99, meaning that God looks for those who are so in the lowest, you know, that he, he goes after them, even if they think they're hopeless. And so God went after Zoe and found him and he's going after you, you know, if anybody's like struggling with the yeah. uh, LGBTQ lifestyle. Yeah. 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 Anything else to share before I, um, before I pray? No, is it okay if I share my channel? And yeah, I, yeah, share your channel. So so I make YouTube videos. I just kind of vlog. Um, uh, if you want to follow me, my name on there is Zoe Zakaria. And I'll add it in the description. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I just, you know, I'm on this journey and I, I'm just I'm just trying to be myself and I want to, uh, if I can, to help people. That's really at the end of the day is I just want to help people because I know where I've been and uh yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Praise God. So I'll, I'll pray for you. Okay. All right. Well, God, I just thank you for Zoe. I thank you so much that you have delivered him, God, from, um, God, just, just, just twistedness, Lord, that he's experienced when he was little. God, what the devil did is to steal, kill, and destroy. And that's what you have me, had me sharing here at this golf open, uh, tournament, Lord, is that devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And he tried to steal, um, Zoe's innocence when he was little. And he almost succeeded, except God, that you had a more powerful purpose and calling for Zoe. And he reached out to him and he wanted, he responded. He wanted to seek you. And I thank you that you met him at the lowest spot of his life and that you took away, God, um, his feelings, Lord, the feelings that lie to us, the feelings that tell us that we're the other sex or we're this and that. God, we're a porn addict, a drug addict. God, you took those feelings away and you replaced it with love for Jesus. So I pray that you just really help Zoe God to share his testimony with many people. I pray this testimony gets spread and gives hope to many people in the LGBTQ community. I know Zoe loves uh, that community. He came out of it. And I, I love him too, Lord. But a lot of times it's, it, people think that Christians hate them because they tell them the truth about what Jesus said that we have to leave our lifestyle of sin to follow him. But I pray that you would use Zoe's testimony to really show the people in that community the 
transgender lifestyle that um, Jesus is calling them to a better path, a better road, uh, a true identity. Identity doesn't revolve around the flesh uh, or, or your gender. So I just pray, I pray, Jesus, that you would just use Zoe. I pray just give him Christians that would support him in his journey. I pray that he would be mentored. I pray that there would be lots of people that would come at his side and would lead him into um, light, God, instead of darkness, Lord. I pray you just put the right Christians around him. And I pray that you just help him st- stick with the Bible, continuing the Bible to not fall into any false doctrine or, or cults um, that, that the devil creates, God, because people go away from the Bible. And I pray that you would deliver Zoe, God, from any temptations and desires towards uh, sexual immorality. I pray you just deliver him right now. I come against spirits of lust, pornography and masturbation. I command him to flee in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray you just set Zoe free and set him on the right path. And I thank you for him. And I pray that you would just continue, God, to watch over him and use him to change many lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Zoe. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God.